Ah, thank you so much for watching this video. I truly pray it blessed you. And if it did, subscribe to this channel that you might continue to get the latest revelation from God that they might encourage and embolden you to walk boldly and faithfully with your Savior. God bless. All right, guys, thank you for joining in with us. Let us dare try getting our hearts right today. Let us, let us get before God and see what he has for us because I'm telling you, he has got a want and a desire to um, see us grow into. He's got a need of our heart to become a certain way that uh, he is longing to take us to this place. And it's a beautiful place to get to, but so few of us reach it because of um, excuses, really. There's no other way to put it. But tonight, I wanted to cancel out those excuses and get our hearts right before God so that we can see him work in our situations, in our families, in our lives, in our, in our world, daggone it. So let us dare go to him. But before we um, get going with the sermon, let's take the time to talk to this. Let's get our hearts prepared before him and get his heart in this, okay? Father God, we thank you for daring to love us, for daring to bring us up and make us more than we think we are, that you have seen us in our muck and our mire and the sin and our depravity, and you see something valuable, something worth giving up all of heaven for to come and gain us. You sold the field that came, come and gained the treasure, God, us. And you sent Jesus as that down payment to gain us for life. And I pray that we rise to those standards, that we um, reciprocate and we give everything to gain you, because that is relationship. That is what you have called us up and into. Holy Spirit, speak through these words tonight. Gain every person that has um, ears to hear, and eyes to see what you are doing in this message and come out boldly and powerfully in the name of Jesus in the lives of those who need it. Amen. Okay, so let me hit you with this right off the bat. Like, set the standard for us because we are allowed to achieve it. We ain't got to settle for less than this. We are allowed to achieve to the highest standard that God has for us in this life. And David sets the stone with, tone with it, right? It comes so easy. It's Acts 13. And we're going to read uh, verses 20 through 22, okay? Acts 13, verses 20 through 22, and we're going to set the standard. It says, after this, God gave them judges until the time of Samuel the prophet. Then the people asked for a king. He gave them Saul, son of Kish, of the tribe of Benjamin, who ruled 40 years. After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. Like, God spoke concerning him. Like, this is his testimony. This is what God saw in him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. Like, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything I want him to do. And we're thinking, like, dad, God, that's amazing, right? David must have been a good little puppet. But it ain't talking about David being a puppet. What God is saying is, I found David, son of Jesse, a man after my heart. He pursued me. He longed for me. He wanted me. He um, came after me and sought me. He hunted me. I found David, son of Jesse, a man pursuing my heart. And that is what he is longing from each and every one of us. So I'm going to ask the question just right up front. If God was to speak of you, how would he find you? You know what I'm talking about? Like, how would he find you if he says, I found so-and-so a man after my own heart? Or we'd say, I found him doing something else. I found him longing for after some other thing. Like, what are you longing for? And we're pretty good at our answer in this. Like, I'm not going to get this twisted a bit. Like, we straight up lie to ourselves. And we're the best liars I know of. And we can lie to ourselves all day long, but God knows the difference. We can't lie to him. Like, a lot of us can give God the lip service, but the heart is far from him. That's what scripture says. Like we, we go more on, um, we go more on feel than the real. You know what I'm talking about? Like we make a good front of it. We, we like to tell ourselves that we're, oh yeah, we after God. When we check and stuff off a box, like, yep, 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 did all that. I must be pursuing God. But we don't wake up hunting him. We ain't real in it. And you know that you know that you know that you aren't. How? By what you wake up after every day. I'm talking what you hunting. Because that is what a man um, pursues in this life. What do you want? Are you wanting God like you need your next, next breath of air? Are you wanting God like, you, like food on the table? Are you wanting God? Are you pursuing him? Are you a man like David after God's heart? Because those are the type of men that God is looking for and looking to empower and to use. And we think of where we're seeing God at today. He is looking 
for men. He's scanning the earth, looking for hearts that are turned towards him, pursuing him with reckless abandon, like his son David, like the servant of the king, like um, those who are hunting him. And we are dared to be such. David ain't supposed to be a one-off in this. He is supposed to be the standard bearer that we are to rise to. We can hunt him just like David did. We can pursue him with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, all our soul. We, are, we can love him as the lover of our souls and hunt him every day. And gentlemen, you know exactly what I'm talking about, especially you've been marriage a couple years. You still want hunted by that wife of yours. You still want pursued. You still want to know that she seeks after you, that she longs for you. And that heart that is in you is the same heart that is in God. He wants yearned after. He once sought after. He once hunted, dang on it. Why? Because he hunted you and he once reciprocated. He is the lover of our soul and we are to be such to him. Feel me? This is a relationship. He the bridegroom, we the bride, and we are meant to hunt him. Just like David. Now let me show you. Let me show you. Because not hunting is easy. And we can all make excuses like this. But I want to show you David what he um, put first and foremost in his life. And then we're going to show a couple of examples, and now I need this to turn to us, because we can't just read about other men. we got to experience it ourselves, because we're allowed to. Dagon, this ain't a star story for 2,000 years ago. This is a present-day uh, tale of love, right? Watch. Psalm 51. I want you to see David, a man after God's heart, and how he put God first and foremost, right? I'm going to read you Psalm 51. We're going to read the whole daggone thing because you're going to see a man in love with his God. I'm talking pursuing him to the end, regardless of what anybody else cared about, regardless of what he um, was thought of. He pursued God and God's heart alone. Watch. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Why? Because I need to be next to you, right? For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Like, I need to be right with you, so wash them out. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. Like, you've been longing to be longed all of this time. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me, to come after you, to hunt you, to long for you, to yearn you, to be after you, right? Grant me that spirit, God. He's stirring himself up here. He's getting himself to the point where he's going hunting. He can't settle for the sin in his life no more. He can't. Why? Because the lover of his life is out there, and you can only get to him by being washed clean. So cleanse me from my sin. He is putting everything on the altar here. He is consecrating himself, and he says, meet me there. Sanctify me there. Wash me there. Why? So that we might be together. And God is rejoicing at this point because he found a man after his own heart who is pursuing him with everything, not letting anything stand between them and their God. And that is what we are called to become. Men such as this. Then I will teach transgressors your way so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. May it please you to prosper Zion, to build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in the sacrifices of the righteous, in burnt offerings offered whole. Then bowls will be offered on your altar. Like this man is after the one he loves. And it's beautiful. We see, like, this is almost like a love letter to him, right? Like, set me right again. I want to pursue you. My eye, like, I know I've done wrong. Wash me clean because I want to be back by your side. All of his days he was pursuing. 
And we set David on this pedestal like we can't reach. And it's an easy excuse to bring in because we're thinking, yeah, but I'm not that guy. Like, I know that I know that I'm not that guy. I'm not even going to front like I am. I'm not going to lie to myself. I'm just not that guy. But you can be. See, that's the thing. You can be because you're meant to be. You ain't the one supposed to get out this or have an excuse away from this. You are allowed to hunt. You are allowed to go after God. You can be that guy. Let me show you Isaiah because he wasn't that guy either. He could have walked away, but he pressed in. And that's what I need some of us to do here today. We got to press into God, not run away and find an excuse. Everyone's got excuses. I promise you, they got a plethora of them out in this world. But for those that press in, they find God. And when they move close to him, he moves close to them. If you will dare throw the excuses on that altar, if you will get washed by him, he will show you his love like you've never known. Quit with the excuses and start pressing in to your God. Let me show you Isaiah because he could have turned and ran. He could have rested on an excuse. He could have been just like you and just like me and said, no more. I just ain't that guy. But he pressed in and God showed up and showed out in his life. And for thousands of years, he's been inspiring those who are daring to do just like him. And he could use you just the same way if you will but get to hunting and press into this relationship with God. Let me show you. Isaiah 6. This is a beautiful dag on it. This is what we can do because I need you to see Isaiah. He wasn't the first choice here. Watch this. Isaiah 6. Some of you feel like you less. I don't care. Excuse. You ain't the less. You are who you want to become in Christ. He'll give you everything you want. I promise you. He's got more than enough to give. You ain't the one that, like, uh, you're getting a bad deal. No, I promise you. You want it, he can give it to you. He got enough for his whole family. You ain't the least of these. You a son just like all the rest of us in the name of Jesus. Watch this, baby. This is gorgeous. I'm going to pick up. Let's just go one. Isaiah 6, 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and exalted. All you got to do is get a glimpse of this. That's it. That's all I hope you get from this message. A glimpse of your God that makes you press in for more. Because watch this, baby. Watch this. I saw the Lord high and exalted, seated on a throne. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two, they covered their faces. With two, they covered their feet. And with two they were flying, and they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of the glory. Now watch what happens at their worship. At the sound of the voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Like the worship shook the place, right? Woe to me. Now we're talking Isaiah. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Like he's throwing up what we would do as an excuse, right? Oh my gosh, I'm not that guy. I'm an unclean guy. I've sinned. I live among sinners. Like, and that could be excuse, but Isaiah wasn't pulling an excuse card here. He was pulling a consecration card. He was throwing it out there for repentance. Woe is to me. I'm sorry. I'm repenting. I'm a man of unclean lips, and I live among those of unclean lips. Like he's throwing his sins out there like David did. Wash me whiter than snow. And if we will but dare do that, put all that we are on the altar. We know we're less than what God's standards are, but if we will put that less on the altar, God will meet us there. And look what happens. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand. A fire of God comes into this man, right? which he had taken the tongs from the altar. With it, he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin is atoned for. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. Look at this. This is the transition that takes place. When you will dare get after your God, he caught a glimpse of his God, just a vision of him, sitting on a throne with his robe filling the temple. And the doorposts were shook with the worship that he heard. And he cried out. He knelt down. And he says, woe is me. I'm repenting of these sins. I'm a man of unclean lips. I know I ain't right with you, God. I know I ain't been hunting you. I know I ain't been pursuing you. 
forgive me, I am sorry. And he didn't run away with an excuse. He pressed in with a repentance, and God met him there. On that altar, he gave everything, and God met him with his fire of sanctification. He said, be clean. See, this fire has made you clean. And then he overheard the God of the universe, the creator of all things, said, who will go for us? And Isaiah, who just overhearing a conversation, who could have used all the excuses in the world, like he living wrong, like he with wrong people, he says, here I am. Send me. I don't want you to find another. I, don't, I, I ain't even part of this conversation, but I heard it. I got to have it. I want to hunt you. I know I love you, and I got to pursue you. Send me. And God said, go. And he tells him what to say. How did it happen? Isaiah changed. He became a man after God's own heart. He caught a glimpse of the vision. And I'm telling you, Catch a glimpse of your God and nothing will be the same. I promise you what's happened to me. I can't go back to how I was. Why? Because God has got my heart and I'm pursuing him. i got to have some God. I'm a man in David's lineage, in Isaiah's lineage. Woe is me and I cry out and fall at him. But he cleanses us and he rises us up and he says, who will go for me? Here I am, Lord. Send me. Why? Because I want to show you my love. I want to pursue you. I want to hunt what you got. I want to do what you need done. I want to honor you in such a way. Why? Because I'm in love with you now. Ah, this is what we can rise to. This is the standard we can bear. We ain't got to settle for less. We ain't got to play with this. We ain't got to like fake ourselves out or lie to us. There is a God that is obtainable, but you got to go low to get him. You got to be willing to cry out like Isaiah and put everything on that altar. you got to be like David and want washed whiter than snow. you got to give him everything. Pick up your cross and follow him. Let him bear it like you got to do it. There is no other way. In all of Scripture, there is no other way given. A man has got to give everything to God before God sends a holy fire upon him. And I'm telling you, once you get that fire upon you, and I'm telling you, I've been, I've been baptized with this spear. Ain't no qualms about it. He sent that fire and it surged through a man. And you remember a thing like that. And it changes you. It empowers you. It gives you a new lease on life. You ain't hunting what you used to hunt. I promise you, I used to wake up every day not chasing my God. I was chasing other things, just like you. I understand where you at, where you coming from. But I'm telling you, change is possible. Change is meant to be uh, made and you are allowed to be a new creation and walk in the victory, walk in the hunt, walk in the pursuit of your God all your days. Mm. Let me show you one of his disciples, one of Jesus' closest, right? Because he, he developed a heart ache for God. He had to be what Jesus was, period. He couldn't stand being apart from him. And when he heard him, he heard him, right? And it hurt him. Let me show you. We're going to look at Peter, Matthew 14. Matthew 14, verse 22. I'm talking Peter turned out to be a bold little hunter of God. Like he couldn't be satisfied without him. And that is what God is coming for. That is what he is longing for. That's what he's going to burn this earth with. Men who are pursued God and God alone. They ain't worried about anything else. What the world can give him, the applause, the, the um, commentaries of men. Forget all that. They don't care nothing about that. They're pursuing the commentaries of their God, the, the reward of their king. They're pursuing the well done, good, and faithful. Keep all the rest. I'm in love with something bigger, something mightier, something better than all this world can give. You are but a footstool that my king sets his feet on. I'm after the one on the throne. Feel me? That's what God is looking for in this earth. That is what we are allowed to become. Look what Peter does. Peter shakes the earth. I want to show you how it started. Matthew 14. Verse 22, immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. Like that's the first thing for Peter's heart, right? He's separated from his God. He's like, whoa, whoa, I don't like this. There was something stirring inside of this man, right? Of all the disciples, there was something stirring inside of Peter. He was not content away from his Jesus. Like that's where we need to get to. You wake up in the morning, you ain't got, got him. You ain't next to him. He ain't next to you. There better be something stirring inside of you that you've got to get close to him again. Is what it is. Like, there better be because Peter had this. Look what I'm saying. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. 
Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. Now look at Peter. Lord, if it is you, Peter said, tell me to come on the water. I bid me to come to you. I don't want to be in this boat with these other boys. I need to be where you're at. Tell me to come. If it's you, tell me to come out there on the water with you. I want to be next to you. I'm a man after your heart. And I ain't seeing Peter was perfect, but he was pursuing his God, just like David. David had some problems, like you can name Bathsheba, but I'm telling you, he loved God more than that woman. He was still pursuing after God's own heart. This is Peter. Tell me, tell me to come. I got to be where you are, period. Bid me come. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? And he may have little faith, but he had a heart that was pursuant of his king. Period. And you could do it with little faith. The faith can grow. The heart can um, grow in love as well. Because Peter, we're going to find him next. After he denied Jesus three times, like he messed up big time, right? Look what happens the next time Jesus comes. Like, this is beautiful. I want you to see. Like, he just said, Jesus, if it's you, bid me come on that water. And Jesus said, come. Be next to me. That's where you meant to be. I love the heart, son. I love that you're after me. Come. But look at the point of the relationship it can get to. Because the next time Jesus showed up, Peter don't even wait for Jesus to say a daggone word. Look what happens. Turn to John. 21. I'm just going to read verses 4 through 7 for you. Early in the morning, this is after Peter had denied Jesus three times before the rooster crowed, after Jesus was crucified, after he was raised from the grave and they found it empty, right? After all of that, early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. <clears throat> He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him for he had taken it off and jumped into the water. Like, he didn't even wait for Jesus to say, come on with it. He says, I'm getting to my king. I don't care what comes. I dare say that boy thought he was going to walk on water to Jesus Last time it happened. This time, sink or swim, he was getting to his lover of his soul. Feel me? He couldn't be a part. This is the first time he saw his king since the resurrection. He had to be next to him. Like he was away from him for half a night when Jesus was on a mountain praying. He said, bid me come. I got to be next to you. I got a heart pursuing you. Now he's been in the ground a couple of days like he ain't seen him for a minute. He said, I ain't waiting for the invitation. Why? Because lovers don't need invitations to stand next to each other. Like, listen to me. My wife ain't got to invite me when she across the room somewhere for me to come stand next to her. It is my privilege. It is my honor. It is my duty to come stand next to her. Why? Because I'm hers, and she is mine, and Jesus is the lover of this man's soul. And he says, I ain't got to wait for the invitation. I'm going to get him. I'm pursuing him. I am hunting him. I have got to have him. And that is what David was commended for. He was a man after God's own heart. And that is what we are called to be. That is what we are allowed to raise up to. We can stir ourselves up to be such. We ain't got to settle for less than this or settle for the excuses. We can press in like Isaiah. We can press in like David. We can press in like Peter. And we don't got to wait for the invitation. We can come to him now and find him because he's there. He hung for us. The deed has been done. He is raised victorious. He sits at the right hand of God the Father. And he is looking for men that will take him. All they got to do is cry out. Believe in the heart and confess with the mouth that Jesus is Lord. You will be saved. The hunt will begin. And you are allowed to grow in this and rise in this and continue to pursue him all of your days. And guess what? If you dare pursue him, he pursues you right back. He coming to get what's his and you his. All of it. Every bit of it. And you are allowed to have all of him. Every bit of him. Get to hunting. Quit lying to yourself that you are and get to truly doing it. Because of what he 
He's ours. And we're allowed to. Like, this is how he works. This is what shakes nations. This is what brings a man new life. He finds the love of his life. His name is Jesus. Ain't no other willing to die in his stead on that cross. Ain't no other willing to take his sins. Ain't no other willing to take his place in the grave. But Jesus was. He did it all for all of us. So if you need someone to pursue, his name is Jesus. Get to hunting, and I promise you're going to find him. Oh, you may have to go low with it. You're going to have to confess them sins. You're going to have to put everything on the altar. And until you do so, he ain't going to send that fire. But I promise if you do so, he's going to sanctify it if you won't tarry, if you won't um, relent, if you won't take it back off the altar. And I'm telling you, the fight's coming. When you dare to give your life for him, when you dare to give everything, the devil's going to come whispering. He's going to put some seed of doubts in, like, oh, God should have accepted it by now. Oh, God should have met you by now. But listen to me. When he made the cover with Abraham, and Abraham had to cut the, the halves of the sacrifice and lay them, vultures came in on that sacrifice, and he had to drive the vultures away. If you put everything on the altar, you're God, and he ain't sent the fire to know that you his and he yours, you drive those doubts away. You don't relent. You keep driving them away until he meets you. Like Elijah on Mount Carmel, you dare let the sacrifice be put on the altar, and he will send the fire from on high into your heart, into your life, into your... Um, situation he will meet you because he has found someone after his heart and he will not deny them what their heart longs for him because he longs for them has before you ever created before your name was ever whispered on this earth he knew you he knew where you were and where he was going to meet you and i'm asking you today dare surrender to him don't just be talking about it do it. Don't be lying to yourself no more like, oh yeah, I'm hunting him. You don't wake up hunting him. You know you don't. You hunt anything but him. You're a byproduct of this. You hunting paper. You hunting a uh, job. You hunting power, money, success, sex. You hunting something. But when you start hunting the right thing, ah, it all changes. You find the empowerment of heaven. You find the kingdom of God comes within and you find that you can walk out a new creation. The old is gone. The new is coming. You ain't never got to go back to that. Peter found it. Jesus reinstated him. Like he said, do you love me? Yeah, you know I love you. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, you know I love you. Do you love me, Peter? And I hurt Peter. He says, yes, Jesus, you know that I love you. Peter gave him everything, even though it was painful. And Jesus put him on mission. He's got the same to do for you. I don't care what it costs you. I don't care how painful it is. You give your God everything of you. Hold nothing back. No room of this heart. Let nothing be hidden in there. You give him everything, even through tears, even through pain, even through embarrassment, even through sacrifice. You give him everything, and you see if he don't meet you with life and life to the full, as is his promise. Because he put Peter on point. Because Peter was willing to give up all of that, and you got to be if you were going to be a man after God's own heart. The hunt calls for your all. It is what it is. The hunt of this God, the pursuit of him, will take your everything. But in giving your everything, here's the beauty of it, baby. If you give your everything to him, he gives your, his everything to you. So you exchange your little for his greatness. Your weakness for his strength. Your finite for his infinite. What you know of love he showers you with his love, true love, enduring love, eternal love. It's worth pursuing. I want to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus, bang gone. Be like Isaiah. Don't run and turn and say, this ain't for me. Press in and say, this is for me. I want him. I want him more than the bread on my, on my table. I want him more than the drink that I got. I got to have him. Give me him or give me death. And he will meet you there with life. If you will but believe, if you will but pursue, if you will but hunt and seek after. Jesus tells us, seek and you will find. He ain't hiding from you. He's trying to get you to reach out to him because he is longing. <laughs> Jesus literally died that he might get a hold of you. So if you need him today, if you're ready to actually pursue something worth pursuing, and that's the beauty of our God, he is truly worthy of the pursuit of all that it costs. Dare to make him your own. Dare to repent. 
hit that penitent form, hit them knees, and be like Isaiah, woe to me, I'm a man of, un- put your sins before him, and you keep them there until you know that he has met those, covered those, washed those, buried those in the deepest sea, and then you rise up a new creation where a slave knelt, a son rises, and you continue to hunt your God every day you wake up with reckless abandon, with all that you are, and I promise he is going to reveal himself to you in ways you have never imagined because he has got purpose for you. He's got plans for you. He's got things for you to experience, people for you to um, speak to, words for you to administer, and revelations to give you that are going to broaden you and depth, um, deepen this relationship that you have now cultivated and come into and are pursuing with this King of Kings and Lord of Lords. There ain't another like it. Dare to gain him and put foot to Dagon's face. Don't just talk about it. That's what James warns us. Don't just talk about it. Do it. Get to hunting like you really want to catch something, like you really want to get a hold of this God. You pursue him like that, he will find you like David. I have found, I'll use me for instance, Cash, a man after my own heart. I see him. He ain't just talking about it. He's being about it. He's pursuing it with everything. And it could be said of you. It should be said of you. It must be said of you because you are meant to reside in his house forever. Dare to gain him. Let me bless you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Now get to hunt.